Hello, this is Richard Price, and thank you very much for watching this video. Today we're going to give you some tips on successful light curing. And as you can see, we've got a few curing lights here, and uh, we're going to walk you through some tips and tricks to improve your light curing technique. The first thing that you should do when you get uh, your curing light ready for the day is just to inspect the tip. You want to make sure that the tip of the curing light isn't damaged, and doesn't have any debris on the end. So please make sure that uh, the curing light's in, in good working order before you start seeing patients. It's always a good idea to go and check the output of the curing light using uh, a radiometer, such as, for example, the checkout device here, or you've got uh, other radiometers from, like, SDI has got the radiometer X. You could check it on that. Or you have the, the, the blue phase meter two, and you could use that to, to check the output of the light. I like the blue face meter two because it will give you both the power and also the ratings from the curing light. And I always like to see the power from the curing light. So after you've gone and cleaned the curing light and you've inspected it and you know that it's working properly, the next thing to do is to go and apply a, a barrier to the end of the curing light. And most manufacturers will provide barrier that fits snugly over the end of the curing light. You want to make sure that there are no seams or wrinkles over the end because this will affect the light output. So this is now ready to go. The curing light works properly and has a barrier applied to it. The next thing you want to do before you start doing your light curing is to set the curing light to the correct exposure time. Now some people cure every restoration for the same amount of time, you know, 10 seconds or 20 seconds, but actually different composites require different amounts of light exposure. Some only require 10 seconds, some require 20 seconds. So make sure you read the instructions for use and set the, cur the curing light accordingly. So 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever you need. Before you start to do any light curing on your patient, um, it's really important to put on some eye protection. By putting on some eye protection, then you can actually watch what you're doing. You know, nobody would ever think about drilling on a tooth like this, but I see many people light curing like that. And it's important that you can actually watch what you're doing when you're light curing. And the only way you can do that safely is to wear eye protection. So use the right eye protection when you're doing light curing. Now some tips and tricks about light curing itself. Well first of all, light curing at this distance doesn't work very well. The top gets hard but the bottom doesn't. So you need to make sure the curing light is as close as you can to the restoration. Now we don't want to go and touch it initially because if you touch it when it's in the paste it's going to destroy all the anatomy. So you want to start the light curing just a few millimeters away and then bring it in really close. Because the top is hard after just one or two seconds. And just remember that light travels in a straight line. So light curing at an angle isn't a good idea. Now that's really important when you think about access. Let's take this curing light here. And when we go and light cure this restoration at the back, like this, we can see the opening doesn't have to be too great for the patient. If on the other hand we use this curing light, we can see how wide the patient has to open for you to access the restorations in, in this patient. So the light tip design is really important when you're choosing a curing light. You want to pick a light that has a low profile head so that you can access the most posterior restorations in the mouth directly straight on and not at an angle. Because using a curing light like this at an angle like that, which would be the same as that, means that the restoration is going to be cured at an angle. And while the top will be hard, the bottom will be soft. That was a tip about choosing a curing light. Choose a light with a low profile head, such as this. The next thing I'd say is that when you're light curing the restoration, you want to make sure that the curing light 
covers the entire surface. You know, if you have a light that's got a really small tip on it, such as this one here, you're going to have to light cure the restoration probably several times. Whereas if you have a curing light with a big head on it, you're probably going to only have to use the light once. As a demonstration, we can see when I'm curing here, you see pretty much the whole tooth is lit up by the light from the curing light. In contrast, when we use this light here, we can see that the light really only covers a small part of the restoration. And to cover the restoration entirely, we're probably going to have to light cure it once here, once in the middle, and once on the distal box. In comparison, when we use a light with a bigger head, we can cure the entire tooth in one shot. Now, a big head is not always a good idea. So if I want to go and light cure a small class 5 restoration, I don't want to light cure the gums as well. In which case, a smaller head is probably a better idea because I can position that more closely over a small restoration. But if I have a large restoration, then a big head is better. So the next tip I'll give you about light curing is it's important to light cure from the sides as well. So not only do I light cure from the top of the tooth, but after you've finished your exposure, then I always like to light cure from the lingual side, and then also from the buccal side as well, to make sure that all parts of the restoration are properly cured. So some quick tips on light curing. The first thing to do is to make sure that the tip of the curing light isn't damaged or covered in debris. The next thing is to make sure that you apply a barrier sleeve and make sure it's nice and smooth and hasn't got any wrinkles over the end of the tip. You want to check the output of the curing light with a radiometer on a fairly regular basis because it's nothing worse than going through a whole day when you find that at the end of the day the light wasn't working properly. So it's probably a good idea to check it at least once a day. And then when you're doing the light curing, always remember you want to fully cover the tooth with light. And if you don't fully cover it, make sure you light cure from two or even three different locations. If you need to, get a curing light with a big head on it, so it covers the entire tooth. And remember, angles are not a good idea. So light curing at an angle is not a good idea. Okay. Always think about the access. Can the curing light actually get in to my patient? What's going to be easier for my practice, that opening or that opening? Now when you finish light curing and the patient's left, then it's time to take the cover off of the curing light dispose of it properly, take out a disinfectant wipe, and wipe down the curing light. Always use the disinfectant wipe that's recommended by the manufacturer. Uh, check if you're unsure with the sales representative to make sure you're using the right disinfectant wipe. And then when it's finished, just leave it to, to dry. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email and uh, stay tuned for more videos like this on my YouTube channel. Cheerio!